Happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone. I'm Day Weather Meteorologist Don Day with your updated podcast for this Tuesday, March 17th. Happy St. Patrick's Day, as you can see, not wearing green. My bad. Sorry, that's what happens when you get up so early in the morning. You just forget those things. Lots to talk about with the storm coming. First of all, confidence is high. We've had a lot of stability in our computer models. The upper level pattern, the structure of the atmosphere that's being predicted by the models all make sense. And we've seen patterns like this before. So our confidence is growing. This winter storm's coming to fruition. We're going to see rain and thunder across southern and central areas of Wyoming and northern Colorado and western Nebraska by Wednesday evening. Then we have a blizzard situation possible for southeastern Wyoming and western Nebraska during the day Thursday into Thursday night. We do not think this storm will be as big and as bad as the blizzard of 2019. It's not going to rise to that level. It's a much smaller, more tightly compact storm, not as big. Not as intense as last March, but it will still have some big impacts nonetheless. Dangerous travel and livestock conditions are imminent. Stock rowers and travelers be prepared. I-25, I-80 in southeastern Wyoming into Nebraska and Colorado will be a real big problem for travelers. Starting tomorrow night late, continuing through Thursday night. This is where we are right now. There's the big bad storm in California off the coast. It's going to be breaking off into a, two pieces. One piece holding back here. This guy right here, it doesn't look like much, but this guy right here is going to break off from the main low, come up over the Continental Divide, then reform in northeastern Colorado during the day Thursday. We mentioned yesterday that when the air spreads out ahead of these lows, we have what's called divergence, which causes the atmosphere to lift. We also have a key ingredient which always makes March storms nasty, and that is a pocket of very cold air coming in on the back side of this system. And here is a focused in showing you Colorado, the region of the Rockies here in the High Plains. This is where the low is centered by noon Thursday. The upper level low at 18,000 feet, the counterclockwise circulations, the winds go like this around these contours here which means the upslope, the air is moving uphill all the way really to 30,000 feet. This is a good placement for the low to really hit these areas here hardest with the heaviest precipitation. So the placement of the upper level low is just in the right spot. This is the other low hanging back that will come through as a smaller piece later on. Want to show you the potential for thunderstorms. Tomorrow afternoon and evening, we're going to see an area of showers and thunderstorms develop right here. So some of you may hear your first thunder, see your first lightning of the spring season. This is the forecasted precipitation totals through Friday 6 p.m. The yellow shows areas of an inch or more of water equivalent. And you can see the water equivalent of an inch or more is now getting more into the northern front range of Colorado covering Larimer, Weld counties, the I-76 corridor. Now some of this right here is going to be rain first before it turns over to snow. North of the border into Wyoming and western Nebraska, the change over the snow is going to happen a little bit quicker. Uh, this will be especially true above 6,000 feet around Cheyenne, Laramie, the I-80 corridor, the summit between Laramie and Cheyenne. Look at parts of Platte County, over an inch and a half of water forecasted by this storm. If we were to convert it to snow, this is what it would look like. Now, these are snow forecast totals based on a 10 to 1 ratio, meaning an inch of water equals 10 inches of snow. With the air getting colder during the second half of the system, these numbers may actually be a little low in a few spots, but you can see snowfall is going to be impressive, especially where you see the pink and purple areas. All of the I-80 corridor is going to be impacted by this system, so travel there is going to be a big problem. I want to show you the wind potential. This is where we're concerned about blizzard conditions. Right here in the axis where the snow is going to be the heaviest, winds are gusting 30 to 40 miles an hour by noon Thursday. So you're going to see a lot of blowing and drifting snow, and this is why we have a blizzard warning in this area right here. Also notice the strong winds in south central Wyoming in the Carbon and Sweetwater County. That's going to be a problem along 80. On the lower side of the storm, some very strong winds around Raton Pass, the I-25 sections of southern Colorado. 
want to show you what it looks like further out. We talked about how March, the second half of March, was going to be stormy. Well, this is actually for next Monday. This map looks really familiar to you, doesn't it? This is almost identical to the situation we have now. Another deep low comes in out of British Columbia. Another low breaks off from it, and that could come our way early next week. So we're not one and done. This storm is likely going to be followed by others later on. We'll update you tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll have a better idea on snowfall totals. In the meantime, plan on this storm. It looks like a foregone conclusion.